One of the things that I have learned through my collaborative training is that I always ask my clients what medications they are on and are they seeing a therapist. My absolutely favorite clients have been those that were either already seeing a therapist or were willing for me to refer them through a therapist. And I think it's important that I differentiate between therapist and the role of the neutral mental health professional. The neutral mental health professional does not do therapy with either of the clients. They don't dig into the past and they help us simply look at here is where we are now and how can we move forward and restructure our lives. Whereas a therapist will um, do more intense one-on-one -on -one work with my client, a therapist will go into the past if they feel like it's necessary. Um, a therapist will be aware of what medication my client is on and may make recommendations that they see the medical doctor, the psychiatrist, if they feel like the medication's not doing what it should do. And the mental health professional who is the neutral in a collaborative case does not go into the past, does not do intense one-on-one -on -one sessions uh, dealing with real change from a deep therapeutic level. One of the questions that comes up is my client will say, well, if I make a recommendation to the spouse as to which attorney to see, I am concerned that my spouse will think that I am referring him to someone who doesn't know what they're doing in order to gain an advantage. What I tell my clients is that I have found that the more I work with um, the same attorneys, the same mental health professionals, and the same financial professionals that we learn to handle a case more efficiently and the case, the clients, uh, the process just seems to go smoother. You do develop a real trust, you know the other team members' weaknesses and strengths, and you also, at least I learn, I'm much more comfortable sitting back knowing that the other attorney or the financial professional or the mental health professional is going to jump in and handle a specific issue or make specific comments because I've seen them do that in the past. Um, we spend less time duplicating each other's suggestions or ideas. Once an idea is out there on the table, we're able to move on and communicate about what that idea or option means. I think that a good example is that in negotiating a contract, if someone has negotiated contracts with the uh, business or the person that they're doing a contract with in the past, then they are able to negotiate that contract much quicker and more efficiently because they know where the other uh, the person that they're negotiating with is coming from. They know more about their business structure, about what they need. And I think that that applies to the collaborative team. It's, it's truly like a sports team where the more a sports team plays together, the more efficient they become the more successful they become. And even though in the collaborative process, each client has their own advocate, and we as attorneys never forget that. We are the advocate for our clients. But yet still, as a team, when we are used to working with each other, we become more efficient, and I think more successful at having the clients reach an agreement that is acceptable to both clients. I would say to people who are watching this tape and who are considering going through divorce 
are considering the need to make some changes to a divorce decree that's already entered to interview attorneys who are well trained and experienced in both models. The decision on whether to use the collaborative model, the litigation model, or the kitchen sink model, which simply means that the parties come together with their agreement, they have an attorney pay for it, and the other attorney reviews it to make sure that the interests of both are protected. It's the client's decision as to what model to use. And I think it's really important as you're considering hiring an attorney that you interview with attorneys who have a very good understanding and training in all models available to clients. I think it's also important that as you select your attorney that you make sure that the communication is clear and understood between you and your attorney. Going into uh, a legal matter that involves family is highly stressful, even if you think that all, everything's worked out and it's going to be easy. It's such a drastic change in lifestyle and such a major life transition that it is naturally stressful. And you need to have good communication and trust in the attorney that you hire because you don't need the added stress and frustration of feeling like your attorney does not hear you, is not willing to work with you on accomplishing your goals, and is not willing to look at if there are other professionals that can provide part of the resources necessary in a way better than the attorney can. I think it's very important that we as attorneys realize that we don't have all the answers. And although this is a legal transaction, it involves psychological, spiritual, and financial issues. And I think that we as a legal community need to recognize that the best service we can give and the happiest client that we can have is one that we truly work to give them the best professionals available to help them through the process.